Okay, so this is number five, clip number five, pertaining to exchange rates. Now I want to talk a little bit about the shape of these curves. Why is the supply for foreign exchange curve, which is also, you know, in effect the demand for uh, Canadian dollar curve, right, upward sloping? And why is there a downward sloping demand for foreign exchange curve? Or effectively, a demand for foreign exchange curve is effectively the same thing as a um, supply of, of Canadian dollars curve. And basically, the way to grasp this, in sort of, and this, this, I'm going to give you a very simple example based on uh, importing and exporting of goods. But it also applies just exactly the same uh, for uh, transactions in the capital account as well, right? So, you, so I mean, for instance, if you're thinking about should I buy stock in the United States or should I buy, you know, bonds in England or something like this, you just take my analysis, change it from, uh, you know, Canadian uh, goods, which I picked as wood. So Canada is going to be producing wood to export to Japan, and Japan's producing, in my hypothetical example, uh, CDs that they're going to um, they're going to ship to Canada. You just change those goods, you know, wood, uh, CDs, and just put in, um, you know, CDs becomes foreign uh, securities and, and stuff like this, and it becomes exactly the same argument. Okay. Um, so it, it, it works for both capital and current accounts, but it's, just, it's conceptually easier to think of it in terms of a current, a current account or trade balance type scenario. Okay, so as I said, Canada has made some wood, cut down some trees, we'll call it ten, uh, you know, uh, some wood, and the, um, we'll say that it's ten dollars worth of wood. Okay, I don't know, I just made this up keep it simple. And uh, the Japanese, their um, 10 uh, yen worth of uh, CDs. Okay. So that's the price. That's the, pr well, I'm trying to, that's the price. So a CD is 10 yens. Okay. And wood comes, let's say, in um, sh sheets. And one sheet of wood from Canada is $10. That's the price. And in this analysis, we assume that the domestic price levels don't change. Okay, so wood will, you know, the one sheet of Canadian wood will always be $10. And the one Japanese CD will always be 10 yen. Okay. Then what we do in this sort of thought experiment here is we ask ourselves, let's pretend that initially the Canadian dollar and the Japanese yen traded at par. Okay, in other words, one Canadian dollar equals one Japanese yen. So it's simple, one equals one. Okay, one dollar equals one yen. And just to keep things very simple, Let's assume that the, for some reason Canada has some really bad depreciation and now it takes two Canadian dollars to buy a yen, one yen, okay? So from Canada's perspective, okay, think about what just happened. Before, to buy this one CD, I had to pay 10 yen, because that's the price. I want to import, I'm a Canadian, I want to import this CD from Japan. It's priced at 10 yens. Originally, because of that one-to-one -one exchange rate, the CD cost me $10, right? Because it was one Canadian dollar was one yen. Now, all of a sudden, we have a situation where it takes two Canadian dollars to buy one yen. Well, the CD still costs 10 yen, so now I have to pay $20 for the same CD. 
So the point being that when there's a depreciation of the Canadian dollar, when we look at those goods over in Japan, they're now expensive, right? It's like it doubled in price. Before, it, was, it cost me $10. Now that's exactly the same CD all of a sudden cost me $20. So the point being that when you depreciate the, the Canadian dollar, Canadians are going to be less likely to want to import stuff. They're going to, be, they're going to have less demand to buy stuff from Japan, less demand for foreign exchange. Because if, if Canadians basically say, I don't want to buy a lot from Japan now because it's so expensive, I can't afford it, there's not much demand by Canadians to go and get Japanese yen to pay off the Japanese producers. Okay, so depreciation of a dollar sh from a Canadian's perspective should lead to reduction in the demand for yens, the, a reduction in the foreign exchange, uh, demand for foreign exchange. And that's how you can see that, that's why the demand curve is negatively sloped. All you do is pick a point on the demand curve. Just take your pen, right, and pick a point. <laughs> okay, now draw in a line that goes straight up. Or right, don't change the quantity, but just straight up. Right? What are you doing is you're, you're, you're showing that the currency, the Canadian dollar, is depreciating. Right? Because remember we said the horizontal, oh, I'm sorry, the vertical axis is the exchange rate. That's showing you a depreciation. Well, the demand curve is negatively sloped. See, the quantity of foreign exchange demanded falls. Because Canadians just stop buying from Japan. So there's no need to go and get yens. So the quantity of yens demanded falls. And this, with the supply thing, it's the same argument, sort of in reverse, right? If you're a Japanese person, you start out with this one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, now it's two dollars Canadian buys one yen. Or, if you think about it from a Japanese perspective, before it was one yen, one dollar. Now I only have to give out half a yen to get a dollar. So, exactly. That can, so, I, if I'm a Japanese person, before I, I had to pay ten dollars or ten yen to buy that sheet of wood. Now, because I only need half a yen to get a Canadian dollar, I'm only spending five yen, right? Not ten yen, five yen, because each yen gives me two dollars Canadian. So, from a Japanese perspective, it's like. These, this Canadian stuff is so cheap. It's like, you know, Walmart. You know, prices keep falling. So, what does that mean? Japanese want to buy Canadian stuff like crazy. So they, keep, they flood into the foreign exchange market. And they're supplying their yens, their foreign exchange, and demanding dollars. So they can buy stuff from Canada to pay off the Canadian producers with the dollars they just got. And that's why the supply curve is sloped upwards. You pick a point on the supply curve. Draw a line perfectly vertically up on that point. So don't change the quantity, just straight up. Okay? So vert, uh, you know, like this, vertical. That's showing to you that you're depreciating the dollar. You can see that off the vertical axis. To get back to the supply curve, you have to push to the right because it's sloping upwards, right? So what it's saying is as you're depreciating, so as the exchange rate's going up, the quantity of foreign exchange supplied goes up because the Japanese are, are supplying tons and tons and tons of their yen because they want to buy stuff from Canada because instead of before having to cough up 10 yen, now they have to cough up 5 yen to buy that same piece of wood. And so that explains the shape. Next clip is going to explain um, uh, 37.2, that uh, picture on the exchange rates, figure 37.2.